First of all, hi, my name is Mark Stevenson. I'm the marketing guy here at, uh, at Cold Essie. That guy right there was, um, was Don, um, Don Copeland. It's Don Copeland, that's who it is. Uh, what we're going to do tonight is talk about this guy right here, the Viper 2, which, I mean, it's not new anymore, but we're still incredibly excited about it. So anxious to, uh, to let John, Don show you what it is. John Don. Uh, when we, uh, as we go through this, I want to get a little housekeeping out of the way. We're going to be switching back and forth from the computer screen to the video, and sometimes you might lose the signal. Uh, we can't really help with that, but if you click out and click back in, uh, it usually works. If you are using an iPhone or an iPad or your Android device to watch this, um, then I would probably just download the application for next time. The, each one of them now has an app for GoToWebinar uh, that you can use, and it works pretty well. Uh, otherwise, you're probably going to have at least one or two issues during the, uh, during the session tonight. You can ask questions at any time, like somebody already has. Um, and, uh, and I'm going to show you a couple of the resources that we have available. I'm going to switch back to the computer screen so you can see what that's like. Okay, Tim has good audio but no video. Um, what you need to do is click away and click back again. That's all I can, uh, that's all I can tell you. All right, so I'm going to introduce you to a couple of resources here. If you are not familiar with it, the, um, the Custom Apparel Startups Facebook group is a fantastic resource for you guys. We've got uh, just about 1,600 members to it, and I'm going to go to it right now. If you just go up here and type in Custom Apparel Startups, There we go. What you'll find is conversations about everything that you guys do. There's, there's a little demonstration here about how, what good stuff you can do with vinyl. Um, there's conversations about embroidery, about direct garment printing. You get notified about things like this, about the webinar tonight. Um, and there's people that are giving you like uh, views of their shops and how they organize, how to price items. It's really a, a pretty big deal and a very useful resource. I don't think you'll find anybody that's a member that is not uh, not learning something from it. Um, the other thing we've got is a podcast. So uh, usually every week uh, we do an episode about a, a business topic. It's always related to the custom T-shirt business, but it, it applies equally to whatever business that you are that you are in. If you do embroidery or printed tees or rhinestones or vinyl, whatever you do, um, the the podcast is going to have some application for you guys. The last one was pretty good. We did selling online, and that was a straight talk about e-commerce with Marco Pena from Deco Networks. It was the first time we ever had Mark, Mark, and Marco um, in a uh, in a podcast. There, there's getting found online and knowing your numbers, which is really important. I'd really like you, if you're not in the business yet, to go through some of these things and give a listen, or uh, hit the transcripts button and give a read, and uh, and learn whatever you can before you get started. Um, the last one I'll show you is CASWebinars.com, which you probably got here through this website, uh, but we do keep it up um, pretty well. So what you'll see here is next week's mixed media uh, profits. We're going to do some applique uh, combined with print, some of the things that we, we might print out on the DTG at another time, uh, and we're going to use that to create applique with the Avance. So you'll, you'll learn a lot about that as well, even though Don Copeland is going to be presenting that one too. The last thing that I'm going to show you is the YouTube channel. Almost 600 uh, or over 600 videos there. Everything from tech support videos to uh, customer testimonials to how a DTG printer or a rhinestone machine works. Um, lots of resources for you. Let us know if you need links to any of that stuff or, um, or if you have any questions. Uh, once again, ask questions throughout. And uh, I'm going to subject you, I mean, I'm going to introduce you to Don Copeland now, who is going to take it from here. Don? Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Welcome, everybody. Thank you guys for uh, taking time out of your evening to uh, spend some time with us. And uh, don't forget not to stand behind the webinar. Uh, oh, is that there. thing real? Yes. Can I move that? You can. You can move it. You can move it way over move here. This over to here. here Beautiful. Go. There we go. I can, I can see how handsome I am now. Welcome. Thank you guys for taking some time out of your evening tonight to spend some time with this. Just cleaning right, the lens. There we go. And uh, we're going to go over the Viper 2. At any point tonight you have questions, please ask them. You guys are kind of driving this. All right. I'm going to go through a basic overview, uh, talk to you a bit about the different platins we have, show you the software, and uh, just really try to give you a good idea of what the Viper 2 is all about. Let's start off with the basics on the machine. The Viper 2 is 
Uh, it's our latest printer. We've been selling it now here in the, the States for about nine months. We started out in uh, March, and I think our first machine's probably shipped in April. It's been, uh, in the years that we've been doing it, probably the, the most seamless launch I've ever experienced. I've been a product manager here since uh, November of 2004. And uh, Bill, who's like my uh, tech at hand today, you know, he's kind of like the, uh, the emergency guy you hopefully don't have to see at any point, you know, he comes running out with a fire extinguisher. But uh, Bill and I have been at this for a number of years together, and I think he'll testify to the fact that the incidences of tech support issues with these machines has been very minimal compared to any other release. Uh, and probably the greatest thing that we're seeing is we're not seeing any printhead failures in the field at all, other than ones that maybe were induced by uh, improper shipping of the machines in the initial states in the early stages. But uh, generally, people can find a way to clog a printhead if you put one in the machine. Right. And that's been a really good sign with these machines. And uh, people are just taking off and zooming with them. Are you going to say something, Mark? I am. Why don't you tell them about what the machine does and, and give them the basics? Mark's in a hurry to get home tonight. All right. <laughs> um, basics of the machine. It's a, it's a direct to garment printer, 16 and a half by 24 area print uh, print area. I'll show you once we get this off of here. It's got four small platens that would be to do smaller size print, seven and a half by 11 and a half. Um, it has two standard size, 16 and a half by 11 and a half, or one oversized, which is a 16 and a half by 24. I actually have uh, the cappers here to show you. This would be your standard size image, and this is the full size. There's a lot of people ask us about doing really big shirts. I mean, and I'm a pretty big guy, and you can That's see true. this is a big, big print area. That's the full print area right there of the Viper 2. Also gives us the most flexible uh, platen system. You know, with our, our M2, which you guys can't see, I'm pointing away, you can sketch it right off the edge there. With our M2 and with some of our other printers, we, we've in the past had a, a wide array of types of platens. Really about the only additional platens people buy for this other than a second 421 is to buy a dual sleeve platen because the 421 aspect of it covers so many size ranges that we would cover with our other platens. All right. Um, the machine itself, it is cartridge based. Big benefit to the cartridge based machine is we do degas our inks. Degassing of the inks has been one of the reasons I'm firmly convinced that we're seeing a lot better head, uh, head, head life on these machines. And we have out of previous models of machines, and a lot of people in this industry have had on other print heads uh, in their in their machines. The degassing of the inks removes any gases that were generated out above a certain level in the ink when they were manufactured. What does that mean in your world? Well, I'll throw another geeky word at you. It means less mm -hmm. cavitation in the head. What does that mean? It means it just prints better. Yeah. You're not going to have to do as many head cleanings. When you do head cleanings, it settles down quicker, more quickly, and so you're you're able to maximize usage of the printer minimize ink waste that you would use for head cleanings and whatnot, and get very, very consistent prints. Add to that the pressurized system with a very short ink channel. Right here is where all of the ink lines go. They wrap around like this. Much shorter ink lines than any of the printers we've ever sold before, which means you don't waste as much ink on ink charges, and it means very quickly when you come in and do a head cleaning in the morning, this machine's back up and ready yeah. to run, and as opposed to maybe doing three or four on uh, some of the older machines on this one, two at the most, and the machine's up and ready to rock and roll first thing in the morning. So basically, that's the advantage of a, a newly designed machine is that all of the things that you just talked about are solutions to problems that the Viper 2 doesn't have, but you might see out there if you're looking right. at other direct to garment exactly. printers. I mean, we have been at this as the DTG group since the, the, the genesis, basically, or late 2004, early 2005. The, the concept began with the DTG group, and by the end of 2005, we were selling machines. And this is this is surely our fifth generation machine. Every generation of our machines we've taken, and there's been input from the family, and I mean the family, the DTG family across the across the pond in in Britain, across the pond, other side of the pond, to the guys in Australia, to us here in the U.S. And we get together and we talk about what we liked, what we didn't like, what challenges we see, what things really that we like to see improved on, and we've implemented them into the machine. And it's really, really hit home with the, the Viper 2. The, the drive mechanism on this was, it's just a, a step up from our previous drive mechanism. Just Wait. so many things better. Can you guess what my two favorite things about the Viper 2 are? It prints two shirts or four shirts. At once, yes. At once. And the other thing is? It fits through a, a regular door. door. Yeah, right, that's, right. that's a big deal. Most of our other machines would fit through Mark's ego. Um, <laughs> however, <laughs> no, but that is a big point about this machine. It's, a, it's a, a lot of machine and a small chassis. Because of the fact that we print long, we have 16 and a half by 24, one of the largest print areas in the market, number one, but 
because of the configuration of the machine, it's 32, 32 inches wide. It will go through every standard door. About the only door you're not going to get it through the standard is most RV doors. Right. Other than that, it's going to fit through every typical straight door. A lot of our customers are home-based businesses, and you know, getting this into their home is very easy to do. It's very easy for two people to pick up and rock and roll with. That's a huge part. If you're going to events, because it's cartridge-based, it's very easy to transport. In here, we have a waste tank. You simply rate, take the waste tank, empty it, and if you, I don't think Mark, you can, can you roll around on here? Yes, I think I can. Wait a minute, we're going to try out one of our new, our, one of our new you fancy. This waste bottle right here. All right, and put it back in, and you're ready to go. You can yep. take this to an event. Don't have to worry about any ink spillage. All right, you lock the head down on the machine. You're ready to go to a show. You turn it back to your SUV. Go to a dog show, horse show, fill in the blank type of show, and you can do live on demand. I know people who've taken these things to like big family reunion events. And they'll oh, take wow. pictures and put them on t-shirts of the family members, you know. It's, it's just a, a great, great tool. Nice. Are there any questions yet on it? I'm trying to see if there are any questions here. Um, just one uh, about the difference between DTG and screen print. DTG and screen print. What's the biggest difference between DTG and screen print is there's no screen. Okay. I mean, they have special, they, they fit niches in the marketplace. And it, it's becoming acknowledged and accepted that screen printers are actually adding direct garment to their business. Whereas for the, a number of years, they were considered the Antichrist. They were something that just didn't fit their model. It was so different from what they were used to. But now they've started to realize that it not only allows them to do onesies and twosies, which they didn't want to do anyway. It, it just, it's, it's, they, they're able to do large runs of multicolor jobs. They can offer variability in data. They can offer variability in graphic size. That's something that this marketplace is maturing and morphing into. You know, you can take a graphic if you're going to put it out for a women's walking event like, you know, a cancer three-day, or you're doing something like, um, let, let's say, you do a family reunion shirt, right, where they, they go from the grandkids all the way up to the Uncle Bubba, which is what my nickname is in the family. Right. Um, and you can vary the graphic. I call it the 8, 10, 12 principle. Take that same graphic, print it in three different sizes, and spread it across your, th your three shirt size ranges, let's say, and the graphics now look the same on everybody. Something you can't do is screen printing. Another thing is is reordering. Screen printers know it. Anybody who's a screen printer out there, you're probably to raise their hands up, <laughs> right? And they're going to say, what happens the day after you reclaim your screens, right? What happens the day after you reclaim the screens is somebody reorders, right? It's easy to redo your reorders in, with a direct to garment printer. Hey, this is a good question. Uh, can you only print on black or white items? And is, only for, is it only for T-shirts? Hey, Pat, that's a good question. Uh, no, it doesn't care. Now, we do have in our queue, in our rips, I'll show you when I, we go into the rip and the queues, we do identify whether we're printing on a black shirt or a dark shirt or a colored shirt because we do need to print white ink on both of them. However, I don't necessarily have to use as much black ink on a black shirt as I do on a purple shirt or an orange shirt or a yellow shirt. Uh, can I print on other items and t-shirts? Yes, I can print on towels. I can print on Canvas. Art canvas, right? Exactly. I can I can print on targets that you would mount on the back of your marketing director. Um, there's all kinds of things you can print on. Uh, we actually, uh, actually, Mark, since you're in the mood to, to show yeah. stuff, why don't you run back to my desk and get those pieces of wood? We have a customer of ours that uh, they do uh, wedding favors. Uh, they actually do wedding invitations on, on pieces of wood. They actually do the wedding favors. A lot of times we'll do wooden coasters that are printed out on wood using a, a DTG directed arm print. They actually have two of our M2s and one of our earlier models. The technology in them is exactly the same. So there's so many applications to it just outside of it. You don't want to stretch it. If, if you're reaching for a lot of extra things, you really need to back off and make sure you're making a, a wise decision because the printers excel in printing on cotton garments. All right. Some of these other things, if you've got a niche, Absolutely, you can rock and roll like the customers with the wood items. They do a lot of wood items, all right? So those can happen, but they also have a storefront where they're selling them. These are applications that you can add on, though, and a lot of times they're great add-on to the, uh, the sales. Here would be one. This would be a wedding invitation. It was actually printed out on, that's raw wood, all right? And then we have a couple of the, the favors they use. This is a wooden coaster, all right? So you can see that's all done. Straight onto it using a DTG printer. The print was actually better than that. It's a little it's blurry. A little blurry to focus. A little blurry. It's right, let's try that. one more time. There we go. See, and those, those are wooden coasters. They get a. I think they start at minimum quantity is three dozen at two dollars and seventy-five cents a piece. 
I would, uh, I will eat that coaster if it has more than two cents worth of ink. <laughs> I really will. Okay. I guarantee you, there's nowhere no, near that. I think Bill probably has, you doubt there's a penny, right? Probably not even a penny on that. Right. All right. Do you connect your computer to, to send? Yes. Good question again, Pat. Are you the only one here? Patty? <laughs> I mean, I like it. Um, I see more names. I see more names. So yes, it is a printer. And that's a great question because I lose sight of that because I've been doing this so long. This is a really, really, really cool inkjet printer. I've connected it to my computer with my USB cable. All right. And I send my print jobs to it. The difference between this and maybe your standard desktop printer is we use a RIP. For those of you who may be in the large format, do signage or something like that, a RIP is just basically a really cool word for a print print driving package on steroids. One of, one, one of the big things stands for raster image processor. Bill wanted me to get the acronym in. Um, it basically takes the data we're sending to it and it, it puts it in a language the printer will understand. Remember, our printer's got white ink in it, which normal printers don't have. Plus, it also has the added bonus of giving us color control, of giving us ink flow control. But most importantly, it also generates our white ink underbase for us for our dark shirt. Are you going to show that sometime? I am going to, yes. Okay. Uh, the layering and of a base layer and on dark shirt. Hey, good question, Jay. Um, in fact, in a minute here, I'm going to pull it up and show you how to do it. The software actually does it itself. It's content-based. Uh, you have the ability to tweak in the rip, uh, what percentage of white it puts under the colors, but it does it completely based on the content. If you take on a dark shirt and you put yellow on it, it's going to put a lot more white ink down than if you're putting purple on it. So it does it all on its own. Uh, so how does it compare to vinyl plastic that I order some of? Okay, so if you're ordering transfers, Pat, Number one big difference is you're printing it straight to the shirt, so there's one less step there. Uh, number two, you don't have any minimum quantities you have to buy. Uh, you just buy one printer. You don't have to buy multiple printers. Um, number three is that when you put it on a light colored shirt where you don't put white ink at all, you cannot feel the print at all. Zero yeah. feel to it and very, very minimal cost. You'll see the image I'm going to print tonight, very minimal cost on the print on this, and it's on a dark shirt. But when you do that same design on a, on a light shirt, it would be literally about one sixth to one tenth the price. Yeah, and think about how um, how much you s will spend on a transfer when Don shows you the ink cost yeah, yeah, for a crazy. design. All right, so first thing we've done, we've loaded our shirts on here to just kind of speed us up today. I've got it underneath here. There's a sensor right here that sets directly to my head, right? Oh, yeah, Joe, you guys can't see that because you guys are looking at that. All right, so right under here, if you can see right here, there's a light sensor. It, we don't want to call it a laser because it's not really. It's just a light beam. But what that is is it's set at the print height, ideal height. So what I'll do is I simply put, make sure my shirt's under there. Press my up button. You may not be able to see it over there, but there's a light that turns red, and I can also hear it stop moving. And that tells me I'm at exactly the right height. Hit the load button. There we go. Boom. There's a little wrinkle on that one shirt. It picked it up. All right, so I'm going to change screens for you now, and i got to remember how I do that, Mark. Um, here you go. All right. Escape. Yep. Go ahead. All right. So I know I'm up here in the corner. I'm going to go ahead and pull up our RIP software. Wait. Put and that. I'm going to. Click there. you got to close this. And we're going to go to the screen. There you go. All right. Hopefully you all are seeing the RIP software at this point. Is everyone seeing my screen with the RIP software? I'm going to be printing on a black shirt. All right, and I'm going to go over here, and I want to do the Viper 2 black quality. All right, actually, I want to do black graphics quality. You ask what the difference is in, hopefully my customer who's graphic that is isn't here. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what the difference, we have, a, we have a quality mode, a black quality, and a black speed, and then we have a black graphics quality and a black graphics speed. What that translates into all right, is graphics would be artwork that is spot colorish, so to speak, something that's cartoony, all right, um, as opposed to something that is more tonal and more photographic, something very wispy, something that has a lot of translucency in it. That would be considered just black quality. Uh, back in the day, we used to call these photo mode and cartoon mode, and I, I think Bill and I still like those phrases better than these. But if it's photographic or very tonal, lots of shading, lots of translucencies, just put it under the, the this black quality or the black fast. 
Yeah, and you know, one of the one of the other things that I just learned recently about the t-shirt transfers is I didn't realize how much better DTG did did the uh, shades, the gradients, yes. than awesome a regular job. transfer At, does. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm going to tell which platen system to use. I'm going to tell it just to do the two up, all right? So what that's going to do, actually, if you see this, uh, I grabbed the wrong, it's two up same. What I want is two up same, bang, all right, is my new platen system, all right? And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to print on these. I'm going to bring in, got a question here, let's grab it real quick. I can't hear him talking. Uh, congratulations, Patty. Uh, oh, yes. Yes, Patty, you need to. Well, if you can't hear me, what can I do? <laughs> um, what are the formats that we can put into the DTG? Good question, Claude. Uh, Claudia, sorry. Uh, Claudia, uh, PSDs, you can put in JPEGs. You can put in TIFFs. You can put in PNGs. Uh, you can bring in uh, PDFs now, Bill? I don't remember much, but that's what yep. I'm hearing. We have PDFs you can bring in. Um, you also, if you work within CorelDRAW or Illustrator, it's on the same machine. What happens is you have the ability <clears throat> to, it adds a filter when you install the RIP. So you just go up and say export to RIP and you tell which queue to drop it in. So that would be from CorelDRAW and Illustrator as well. Um, you also can just export out of both of those programs PSDs as well. Nice. All right. I always move you all over there. Back to our story. So I've chosen our two up platen system here. All right. You see, I have all these different. Uh, two up, right? We have the, the two up V2. I mean, we have, there it is. That's the one I was looking for. Make, make this small for me. Okay. It's starting to bother Mark. So this is now showing my queue system. If you look in here, you can actually see, I'll back out a little bit. This is showing my two platens that we had there. These are the printable areas where the platens themselves are. I'm going to go up here and I'm just going to import a file. We're going to print, since it's Christmas time, we're going to do a Christmas tree. Good idea. Right? Good idea. All right, there's a Christmas tree there, and I'm going to rotate this puppy 90 degrees. If you see the zero, zero up here, that represents the front edge of my printer that I pointed to that none of you are able to see. And I'm going to rotate that none. Sorry, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. Boom. That puts it to the opposite direction. 270 goes the other direction. Bill just put his hands up. Now I'm going to go down here and I'm going to select the second one. And I'm actually going to bring in the same same graphic here. Or, you, know, you know what? We'll grab a little different graphic. Uh, we got, no, because we want to do them in the same pattern. Well, here's a butterfly. I'm going to bring in the better butterfly, put that on the second pattern. Notice I'm being able to print two different graphics at this point. This one, I want to rotate the 270 again. I want to make sure Bill was alert to that. And uh, we're going to size it down just a hair. I'm going to bring it up a little bit more towards the collar. Same with the Christmas tree. A little bit more towards the collar there. All right. So these are my two graphics. I have the two of them. I'm going to grab both of them. First thing I want to do is I just want to rip it just to see what ripping does is it actually processes the images and gets them into a format that the printer itself will recognize. And are you printing two different graphics I am on two different, two different shirts I did that at the same time? I like to watch Mark's mind go. I gosh. love that. And you know why I love that is because nobody else in the industry can do That's that. right. So what it's done is it's processing these two out. If these have been the same image. It would, have, it would have processed about twice as fast. These two images together, $1.68, all right? And that gives us for, the, for both, both of the output, all right? So I've got those processed. I'm simply going to go in here and tell it to print. Starts processing it now. $1.68 for these two graphics, guys. That's a, that's not a whole lot of money for ink. Yeah. So, so I probably got to go back to the regular screen now, since we are. Yep. All it's right. Video. Video, and I'll put that. that. All right. Make, and I'm going to make this full screen. All right. Awesome. Good job. All right. Printer starting right now. It's what it's doing. It's generated, and it's printing the white underbase. All right. Questions at this point about what's going on? All right, good question. What what have we done up to this point? Uh, when you print on dark shirts, you do have to pre-treat the, the dark shirts. We have the spider mini. If Mark wants to swing over there, you can show him the spider sure mini. All right, and if you want to swing a little bit further here, show him the Wagner sprayer. Can you go that far? Yeah. Right there on that. See that? That's you get to room. you get a great tour oh, yeah, of our uh, of our crappy showroom. We're actually in the back right now. Probably. Uh, 
by this time next year. month, yeah, next month, <laughs> next year, next month, um, we should be uh, filming from our new studio. We actually on the other side of that wall where those doors are at, we're uh, we're building a sound studio to be able to do these uh, webinars uninterrupted. Uh, you guys haven't seen the fire drill that's going on in the background here. Everybody, somebody comes down the hall talking loudly because they're on their way to get a beer while I'm still here working. <laughs> um, and we have to tell them to be quiet. But we're actually building a sound studio. That's another benefit to you is it's, you'll be, if you're working with the tech and he's trying to, to get you to do something, they're going to be able to walk right into there, quiet. Camera stuff's always going to be in place. We're not going to be all on wheels like we are here so much and wheeling things in and out. And you'll be able to, the tech will be able to walk you through a, a quick uh, setup or change repair uh, on your machine. See a question there. How many t-shirts can you print per ink cartridge? Marianne, that's a good question. How, however, it's not an answerable question. I can tell you this, an ink cartridge has 150 milliliters in it, all right? The average color layer uses about a milliliter worth of ink. However, it uses a milliliter of ink across the four colors, which would be 600 milliliters in there. So in theory, you get 600 milliliters or 600 layers white color layers out of the, the color cartridges. And then there are four white cartridges for 600 milliliters of white, which should give you anywhere from about 100 to maybe 200 dark shirts out of the whites. Yeah, I think the best thing to do, um, Maryam, is to take a look at the graphics like what Don just did in the rip, and it will tell you how much ink is used for that specific right. shirt, and you can estimate it from there. It's always profitable, 100% of the time. The ink I, is very inexpensive. I, I see Patty is still having problems hearing. Um, just real quick, if you can hear me, just type something as, in, in a question or put your hand up. Yep. Okay, Marianne can hear me. So, yeah, uh, I, if Patty can't hear me, I don't know what to say to her. Uh, can I type right here? Yeah, you can. Right there. Yep, can hear you. Okay, great. Claudia, I seem to struggle with getting the image in the correct position in the she shirt. Um, Claudia, this is really not training. Um, I would love to do that. It really is just a matter of practice and knowing where your printer prints. You, there are, you do have settings where you can tweak, and it's a good question to tell folks. If you're having challenges with where it's printing on a shirt, the machine is consistently going to print to the same position on the platen. If you're finding that your machine isn't perfectly in sync with the, the uh actual platen setups in the RIP software, mm -hmm. you can go in there and make adjustments and change them, you know, eighth inch up this way or an eighth inch down that way to get them to align to your printer. Um, and you should only have to move it up or down. There shouldn't be any other change. Maybe, that, maybe, the we, space get, is going to be the maybe we get Bill to yeah, uh, we'll get do Bill, a little video. If you would drop uh, Mark an email afterwards, um, Mark will hook you up with Bill. Mark, if Bill can get you to do that. You can see right here, if you want to roll in here a little bit, we've yeah. got the underbase Mar on our Christmas tree. Miriam, you should just be seeing, um, you should be seeing video. I'm going to bring this up. And we're going to tilt this down so you can see and watch it print a little bit. That's the white underbase. Yeah, so Marion, uh, if you're uh, working on, you know, you may just want to exit out and come right back in, right? Yeah, just click away, it, click, click away and click back. Click away and click back. We occasionally have that. If you're working on like an iPad or something like that, especially, or a notebook or something. They, we seem to have more problems with that. As Mark was telling folks earlier on, um, in the future, if you're going to be doing these on a regular basis, there is an app you can get for the GoToWebinar. Right? Yep. That's a nice looking print so far. All right, yeah, I think this is going to be a pretty good looking print. Good Christmas print for everybody. So so the, the next question is, how long does it usually take to print? You know, this, that's a good question. You know, the average design that we do on these you're going to see something like this. It's a fairly good sized image. You're looking at this. It's going to take anywhere from three and a half to five yeah. minutes yeah. per dark shirt, light shirts, anywhere from 45 seconds, a minute and 15 seconds on average when you're doing two up. Uh, you lose some efficiency when you're only doing one. So certainly if you do two up, you get more of an efficiency and it gives you more downtime in between to be away from the printer. That's another thing that I'll bring up what we call the uh, interface time. Your interface time is much lower on a Viper 2 because you can print two shirts at a time or four smaller shirts at a time, go away and actually be able to get something done. You don't feel like you have to run back at the very second and get the, to get there because the machine is going to be done printing in a minute and a half. It might take three minutes or six minutes to get two shirts done. You can actually do something. Uh, all right, so we see that, Claudia. Thank you. We'll pass it on to Bill. All right. 
Any other questions? So, how can you get one? No. The rest, you know, we, we've only shown you here printing on dark shirts. We certainly print on light shirts, but light shirts are just ridiculously easy. Um, we would be done <laughs> right now right. if we were printing on a light colored shirt. But we do print the white at a little bit higher resolution. And it, it's very simple. As you can hear, I'm sitting here talking. The machine itself is quiet. Perfect people, for a back people, bedroom people kind of a thing. A lot, yeah. You know, about how loud the machine is. There's no smells. You know, the ink has minimal flavor. Um, <laughs> it, it's really something that's very straightforward, easy to set up in a home environment. Do not drink the pre treat no matter what he says. That's right. Yeah, I, I wouldn't suggest drinking it. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, you're listening on your phone. Good, good. Oh, good. Good question. Thank you, Patty. I'm glad you got back on. Uh, question is the cost ink. of discuss ink price versus transfers. So, Patty, you may not have heard me when I was talking. These two, I think, was a dollar sixty-eight, dollar eighty-six for dollar dollar eighty. No, I think it was dollar sixty-eight. Okay. You are listexic. Yes. Dollar. It's a. It, it was less than a dollar seventy or so in the dollar seventy range for both of these. So let's just call it a split. Probably ninety and, and eighty cents for each of these designs, and I'm printing one off. Um, and they are multiple color. The, the Christmas tree one you could probably have screen printed is probably going to be a five color screen. So, Patty, I'll ask you, what do you pay to have a transfers full, printed? Full color transfer. Yeah, let's say you're doing a, a full color transfer. You know, and how many do you have to order for that is another another question. And what's your turnaround time? Most people who are doing, if they're plastic salt transfers, you're using somebody like Transfer Express or someone like that. And you typical, can pay five or six bucks or yeah, more. You, you may be five, you may be $10 a piece if you go with a short number with a lot of colors. But, you know, typically I find that the transfer cost uh, about seven for, $7 full, for color. full color. Wow. wow. One transfer. Wow. Okay. Um, so literally, 80 I cents. haven't printed a $7 direct to garment print. Right. The, the most expensive one I printed was like six and change. It was actually the reproduction of a poster on the front of a shirt on one of our earlier printers. And that was back when the ink was more expensive. <laughs> and it was, it was 12 and a half inches by 18 inches. And it was a solid white base underneath of it because it was just so, an so print. So for, so $7 for the transfer, 80 cents roughly. Well, with pre-treat, yes. you know, I mean, one tenth the cost. No, I, the question, the answer is yes, you could, Patty, because you just got the artwork in, right? And if it's taken, say it takes four minutes a shirt, all right, and that's 50 shirts, that's 200 minutes, that's three and a half hours. Um, they won't even have sent your invoice back to you for when you place the order for the transfers, all right? That's part of it. And you're paying $7. These are under a dollar a piece, all right? That's six dollars a piece. That's three hundred dollars of savings on a fifty-order shirt of shirts, right? That even if it took you four hours, just the savings alone paid you seventy-five dollars an hour. Yeah, I think most of the people out there in direct-to-garment land would happily work for seventy-five dollars an hour. That's almost like being in marketing here at Coldesi. That's about what Mark <laughs> makes. Plus, if you, um, I mean, think about: Have you ever gotten a design and wanted it just? half an inch shorter right? or half an inch bigger, or you want to give somebody like what Don says, you know, a smaller print for a smaller right. shirt. You know, the other thing you weigh in on is selling to the person, right? How easy is it to print one shirt like this and walk in and say, hey, look what I've got. And you can show it to them and how easy it's to sell to them. That, that, that was, we did say tell you that the ink cost, if Patty, on these two shirts was a dollar sixty-eight or dollar seventy-eight. Yeah. Mark and I are arguing over what it was. Under two bucks for both shirts. So there's less than a dollar worth of ink on each one of these shirts. All right. And uh, and it comes in it comes in cartridges. Yeah, not a set in of tanks. cartridges is two hundred and ninety-three dollars. That's four whites, one of each of the colors. That's the way most people buy it. And it's crazy. At the end of the year, you'll find out if that's all you've been doing is buying sets of cartridges. You may have three mismatched cartridges. It's crazy. Just works out. You know, we sell about 20,000 liters of ink a year. And at the end of the year, we will be so close to 10,000 liters of white and 2,500 liters of each color that you would, you'd almost cry and you would, yeah. think, you would think it was a fix. Right? Yeah. Let me, let me zoom in so you can see these prints while they print out. Oh, how about this? Oh, we just take this one up. 
All right. There we go. Merry Christmas, everybody. That's our Christmas tree print. And that Very one nice. was easy. That was actually a, that was just a free public domain shareware, wasn't it, Bill, that you yep. found? We'll come take this thread on the heat press. All right. We'll take this opportunity to show you guys the platen system a little bit more in depth. All right. There's the other one. Yep. Ba -ba -ba. Looks great. Nice. And, and if you look at that, the tonal changes and that and the light whites and whatnot are crazy. Um, this is the uh, the 421 platen system. You want to back off, Mark, so I'm not killing them. Hold it up here so they can see it. Seven and a half, eleven and a half, right? Sixteen and a half, eleven and a half, sixteen and a half by twenty-four. Using those cappers I showed you earlier. See how versatile it is? And uh, it's important that this is your showroom unit. Do not take it out of the showroom. <laughs> and you have to write that comes on every on every <laughs> platen. We we write that on there for you. There's no additional charge. It, it's really one of the big selling points of the DTG family. We've always been versatile on platens. Our platens are removable. I mean, let's go ahead and let's mention some names of, of other printers out there. A lot of people look at Brother. A lot of people look at Epson. Both of those machines use fixed platens. Both of those machines, <clears throat> you have to be there to load a shirt immediately when it's done printing, right? And because it's a fixed platen, you can't have the platen already ready. We come from a background of embroidery. The entire DTG family does, in fact, come from a background of embroidery. We understand in an embroidery machine, everything you get is two of something for each head, right? That way that you have your next garment ready to go into the machine as quickly as possible so you get the machine printing more quickly. So your downtime on the printer is, is lower and therefore production is higher. And we all know if it ain't making noise, it's not it making, making money. money. Even though this only makes a little bit of noise, it still <laughs> it doesn't really make a lot of noise. Yeah. Right. So question, uh, where do we stop? This is the Patty show tonight. Yeah, Patty, I think that it, Patty had a good question. I've heard that you have to use them every day so that the ink doesn't dry. Um, that you're reading stuff that was five, six, seven years ago. Mm -hmm. um, one of our competitors over in the European market uses this same ink configuration on their machine. They were in their advertising. They're psychotic. I wouldn't do it. But in their advertising, in trade magazines and everything, they were touting that you could leave this machine two months without using it. Now, I will tell you comfortably, I would tell you you could use it go two weeks without using it. Wouldn't go much longer than that, but two weeks is a long time not using a direct garment printer. Right. And if you really think that on a regular basis you're going to be away from it for two two weeks at a time, you probably shouldn't be buying one. Well, remember Patty too that you know Don started talking about what what they've designed differently in this machine specifically because of things like that. Yeah, I mean it's we've come a long way, and understand that the internet. One thing that people don't tend to see is the age of the information that they're reading. Yeah. And under, there is also, because we're five generations of machines into here, there are people who are still trying to, to nurse seven, eight, nine-year-old machines along. The technology in these machines, I look back at stuff I wrote in the early days. It was in our manuals, in our training material, that Bill and I, like, we fall down on the ground and start talking in tongues when we read. We, we would never tell anybody to mm -hmm. even get, carry the materials into their building where the printer is. And we right. were telling people to clean parts of the printer with it. So <laughs> the industry has matured a lot. The machines have gotten a lot more user friendly with the pressurized system that we have in this. Comfortably, periods like Thanksgiving where you might shut down four, five, six, seven, eight days, not a big deal. Right. Anytime you are going to leave the machine, I always tell you to shorten the window up, and I don't mean shorten your vacation. The last thing you do before you leave, do your maintenance on a machine, do a couple head cleanings, put it to bed. Then the first thing when you come in that next day, the day you're back, do a couple head cleanings, print out a white block on the dark shirt. And you're up, up and good to go. So understand, anytime you leave any printer for any extended, extended period of time, you will experience, experience a little bit more waste and the angst to get it fired back up again. But it's that, certainly not going to kill the print heads on it for reasonable periods of time. And could you use the large uh, platen for table runners? Sure. I mean, 16 and a half by 24, put a piece pretty big. Mask it out on a table and lay out your table runners. You see what you can print like. You know, and if they're, they're longer ones uh, and it's not a contiguous pattern, you just print it in two stages. Right. Uh, do, 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 do. You choose something that, like, uh, I have customers that order one or two items, so something like this would benefit greatly, and you wouldn't be able to pay, you know, really exactly. The challenge with transfers is the minimum and also the turn time. I mean, having this, you can give them one right now. 
And that's a huge benefit, plus the cost savings, right? Generally with transfers, you don't start to see that the cost savings, so you get into 144, 288, if it's a four or five color job. Any other questions specifically about the machine, about the software? Mark wants to show the shirt off again. Mike, I, Mark, I, I Mark do. Simple, I love the shirt. That out. I, I like to show off the shirts. And by the way, I mean, guys, a great looking literally, frame. that was a public domain piece of clip art. All right. Next week, we're actually going to be taking that same graphic. We're going to print it out on a material. We're going to applique onto a shirt with the Avance. Mark was maybe mentioned that early on. Yep. And we're actually going to sew some ornaments on it, and we're going to sew over the star. So it's going to give us a, a good 3D effect on a on a sweatshirt. Nice. Uh, did it, is it software? Yes, the software is included with the machine. Good question. Um, the only thing you need in addition are heat presses. And maybe it's a breach machine. Oh. So Curtis said that he'd actually, life got in the way of him as we started with his machine. And he wanted to know basically uh, what I do to start it back up. For, you know, first thing is just call tech support. And have the guys walk you through. Yeah, I would go through and and uh, I'll give you Bill's personal cell phone number at home if you need. Um, <laughs> Call down. And uh, no, literally, what you want to do is do a couple head cleanings, and you probably are going to end up doing a need to do an ink charge because I'm sure it's probably settled out in the lines, and uh, you should be pretty good to go. Uh, it, it's not a bad idea if that doesn't take care. With after a couple of nozzle checks, run a good system flush with the flushing cartridges and get it back up and running. Can you print on front and back? Yes. Yeah, you need, obviously, treat it as two jobs. Uh, and my general rule is always print the smaller item first because you're more likely to screw up at the beginning than you are at the end. <laughs> and that way, you, you would hate to have a, a dollar and a half print on the back of the shirt and screw up on the eight cent print on the front of the shirt Yeah. and waste it all. But yeah, you would just treat it as a, a run of two. And do you all of the, the one side first, then do all the other side, and you're ready to go. If you want to get be a little bit more efficient, some people would actually set it up so they're doing the smaller fronts, right, this way. So you do four of the smaller images, and then you would do two up the larger image, like a front and a back. Nowadays, it's, it's the world's upside down, right? It, a lot of times, the big print's on the front and the small print's on the back around the neckline or something like that. Um, what is the cost, or should I contact the salesman? Salesman. Uh, well, we are recording this, so for perpetuity, we don't want to get carried away, but I will put it in this line. It's one of the least expensive uh, directed garment printers on the market. Patty, you absolutely can talk to your salesperson. We are running a promo uh, through the end of the year. This is actually uh, the anniversary of the formal launch, uh, the 10 year, ten years ago at, at that ITMA over in Singapore is when the DTG brand was actually formally launched, and that was in October. So this whole quarter we've been celebrating great pricing on these through the end of the year. And for anybody who attends here, Tell your salesperson you attended the webinar. We'll give you a free set of ink as well, extra set of ink for the machine. Robinson wants to know the configuration of the amount of white ink that puts on the garment. Robinson, that sounds like a um, that sounds like more of a tech support question. But no, we do have videos on that. Though, yeah, but as well. no, how did how, show the configuration of the amount? Uh, straightforward, Robinson. General rule is is you're going to have anywhere from about four to ten times as much white ink as you do color. Obviously, the lighter the colors and the darker the shirt, the more white you're going to put down under it. But a dark color like a purple or a brown or a, a, a gray or dark green is going to require a less white ink than a yellow and orange and a hot pink. Cool. All right. I think that looks like we've covered a little bit of everything. Big things to, 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 to add on to all this that we haven't talked about. Training. I feel that we probably have the best training program in the, in, in the entire industry. Um, our train, lead trainer, John, based up in New Jersey. And... John has done videos on all of the equipment we sell. We do live online training, very similar to what we're doing here, where John will be talking to you. You'll be watching videos. You'll be going through a PowerPoint with him, and you are going to have an exam at the end of each section of the training. And then you go to a live webinar where you're communicating with John. You're hearing other people, just like you guys are hearing questions. I'm reading them back to you, but you're hearing the questions that other people are, are asking. Same thing with this. So you get that, and that's our training. And the beauty of it is it's PowerPoint driven and video driven. So every single time you go through the training, John has a set pattern he goes through. Everybody gets the same level of training. Plus, you have up online access to all the videos and all the stuff that he uses, the material he uses as well. So if you need to do a refresher. On top of that, it's free for as long as you own the machine. So you can come back when you add an employee. 
plug the employee into one of our live online trainings. If you happen to be fortunate enough to be in the area of New Jersey or our office here in Florida, you're welcome to come to our class. I would say fortunate training as well. enough to be in New Jersey. Trust me, if you're if you're up north, okay. You better schedule your training for the next two months early. Yeah, we got they, a lot. We, we get, always fill we're up. Full. We're uh, full. Yeah. January, February, and into March, we generally get pretty full. But great training. That's a huge thing. As Mark mentioned, we have a ton of videos on YouTube. A lot of those are to help you in, in processes, help you in tech support issues, um, to help you just in the overall operation of the RIP. All of that is available to you as well. And uh, plus, we've probably got. 10 or 15 of these webinars online. Yeah. You can go in and catch the other printers we sell, our embroidery machines, our rhinestone machines, our spangle machines. Coleman and Company, they, they make us seem like chumps. And uh, I think Mark well, has two or three a week, right, of the, uh, the the webinars as well. So, I mean, it we, we have the resources and the power to help you guys succeed in your business. And that's really what the Coleman family is all about in cold uh, you know. Absolutely. I mean, a huge percentage of our of our sales every month are to customers that have one of our machines. So yeah. it it's different than dealing with an Anajet or an Epson right. because you're going to come back and talk to us about embroidery, about Bingo. about bling, about all of it. Myself and the other, there's two of us are fairly senior reps here. Actually, three. And uh, if you look at our sales on an annualized basis, 30 to 35 percent of our sales are customers in our system. People who've already bought equipment from us, and that's a huge testimonial to to the family. And some of them are third and fourth generational. I mean, they're buying their third or fourth machine. They've they started out with embroidery, then single head, bought a multi head, added DTG, added rhinestone. Or, you know, we've got some of the people in the bling marketplace. It's crazy how many yeah. machines they've got. Yeah, I've got one customer that has seven DTG printers that and that he's done them over a period of time. Didn't buy them all at once. So we have a lot of customers like that. Well, I don't see any more questions. Thank you guys for carving some time out of your evening. Aha! I knew we'd wake Patty up. Is there a code we need to provide to the salesman if we order? Just tell them that you are at the uh, webinar tonight, and they will see to it that you get the, the free set of inks, Patty. Um, if you need, you can contact me. It's uh, D. Copeland. That's D as in Don. C-O-P-E-L-A-N-D at Coldesi. C-O-L-D-E-S-I.com. If you're on the Facebook page, just uh, tickle Mark a little bit. I'm up there a lot, and uh, we'll make sure that your sales rep knows about it and gets with you. Great. You guys have a great evening. If I don't get to see you, I'll have a great Christmas. Thank you for uh, all the time you've spent with us this year, and we're looking forward to a really solid 2016 coming up with lots of educational uh, webinars for you in the future. Yep. Thank you all. Thanks, guys. Evening. Bye.